Yeah, Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to study a portion of your word. Father, we pray nothing said is unpleasing in your sight. Dear Lord, please forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. Lord, let your spirit be amongst us, Lord, as we open up your word tonight, Father. Dear Lord, we just ask, Lord, that your word come on good ground, that it may make a difference in our lives. We ask these things in your daughter's son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, y'all. So we're going to start a new topic this morning. I mean, this morning. This evening. And we're going to be talking about being adopted by God. Okay. How many of y'all know how much of a blessing it is just to be a child of God? Amen. Just to even call yourself a child of God. Amen. Amen. So y'all, tonight I want to start with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31 and 32. So go ahead whenever you're ready, Brother Lynn. 31 and 32. Yes, sir. But if we, we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chasten, chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Y'all, let me ask y'all a question. How do y'all think people really do when it comes to judging themselves, looking at themselves? How do y'all think people as a whole do when it comes to that department? We look at other folks first before we look at ourselves. That's the natural thing. All right. It's a rare thing to meet people that's kind of hard on themselves and, and go over themselves with a fine tooth comb. Amen. Amen. Look at the but look at what the writer is saying here. He said, if we would judge ourselves, then what? We would not be judged. What does he mean by that? What he means, y'all, is you can't beat a dead horse, can you? Mm -hmm. If you already have looked in the mirror, you see your flaws and you admit your flaws and you open about your flaws, and these are things that you are working on or you need help with, then why is a person, another person trying to beat you down about it? He said, if we would judge ourselves, then what? He we said, would we would not be judged. Amen. Why is that? He says, for when we are judged, we are what? Chasing of the Lord. What does that mean, y'all? How is when we are judged, we chasing of God? Because that's what he loved. I mean, that, that's what I feel. Yeah. You know, look within yourself. But you know, chasing, chasing means to be corrected. It means, it don't always mean whooping. It could be training. But, Amen. But what does he mean when we judge ourselves? We chasing of God. We correcting ourselves so God don't have to correct us. We correct him before he do. Yes, that's true. Amen. No, you know. It's almost like having that, that godly sorrow. You better believe it, Brother Troy. Y'all listen to me. You know, the Bible talks about in Romans 7 that when you agree with the law, then you agree that the law is good, right? And so watch this. When you accept what God is saying is true, and when the word that he's saying applies to you, and you say, you know what, sir? Yes, sir, you're right. I, I am wrong in that department. God is saying, that's God correcting you. So watch what he says. That we should not be what? Condemned with the world. Y'all, our whole Bible study is based around this thought. If you can agree with God is right about you, that's God's way of saving you. Why do I say that? Y'all know God said in one place that he'll send people that don't want the truth, what? Strong delusions, so that they, what? Will believe a lie, so that they can be condemned. People that don't want to look, man, I'm telling y'all, we're living in a time, y'all, people cannot stand to be, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say corrected, but critiqued or to be, um, yes, I'm, I mean, See, and that's a word, Brother Mike said, to be judged. And that's a word we use loosely, y'all. We use the word judge loosely. Calling sin by his name is not judging. Saying that, saying that something that wasn't true is a lie is not judging. But if I say you're going to hell for that lie, then, that's judging. then I judged you. you. You got me? But just they call don't want to be called out. There you go. Calling sin by his name is not judging. 
But we live in a time now that if you call sin out, people say you judging me. That's not that's not sound. It's actually love. It saves somebody when you call them out. And that's what I'm trying to get at, y'all. We're supposed to be children of God. And we don't think like the children of God that's in this book. What do I mean? Y'all, they used to tell, they used to have stuff like get the leaven out of the camp. That meant that, watch this. I had to deal with the theoretic, spiritually speaking, I had to deal with the sin in my house first. Like the Williams brother said, I had to sweep around what? My own front door. But that ain't the end of it. We also then have to help others overcome sin. Y'all remember when the Bible say, get that beam out of your own eye? Then you'll know how to get the moat out of your brother's or your sister's eye. You know what he's saying? Deal with the sin you got that you can clearly see. If you can figure out how to get that sin out of your eye, well, you got a clear conscience about how you living. You will look at your brother's sin and it won't be such a big deal. That sound fair? Amen. Because his could be not less than yours. Not only is it less, let me tell you something. You develop wisdom. You develop patience. You develop understanding. When you fight and get the victory over your thing. Amen. Anybody on here that has something that they had to get over or get the victory over, but it took a little while? And, and you can say, man, I was doing good for six months. And man, I went back to it. Mm -hmm. You fell again. Hey. Somehow yeah. you got back yeah. up. Yeah. And, and you, but you're stronger. Even though you had some falls along the way, you're stronger. Well, you mm -hmm. know what they did for you? Amen. Now, when you have a brother or sister, and they still in their sin, you and won't they go hard out because they can't, they can't overcome it. You tell them, calm down. It's all right. It ain't bad as you think. It's all right. Ooh. Been there before. Yes, Lord. Amen. But that's because you dealt with your beam. And so now you have counsel for your brother and your sister's moat. Yes. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Amen. And the fact, that, you know, the fact, can you hear me? Yes, sir. And you know, you know what helps me though, the fact that you say that, um, getting that beam out my eye, I had to realize because y'all know I like to speak more boldly. So I have to deal with myself to speak boldly before y'all and others. Yeah. I had to realize, man, I had a whole problem. I had a pride issue of feeling like I need to be validated because one of the tricks of the devil he would use with me, well, you just don't know, Johnny, you don't know nothing. So when it comes time to talk about something, uh, I would get uh, I, the people the uh, people would tell me something about myself, and they'd be like, "Well, you you're still young, or you don't know this right here. You ain't there. You still a rookie at this trucking thing. Stuff like that. Those are tricks. Mm -hmm. So it will fall over into my walk with God. Now somebody probably could tell me something about myself with God, and then I would feel like, I mean, I know that stuff. I've been reading. Uh, you know that." Be real. I have to be real careful with that right there because it'll make you feel like, well, you can't tell him nothing. But right. that's an issue from within me. That's a root that I had to dig up and mm -hmm. and try to, you know what I'm saying, just kind of deal with that because that becomes a pride issue because I feel like somebody can't tell me nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's just that's something a, I really had to deal with in my head. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It's a, it's a trick from the, also a trick from the devil. Yeah, he'll use on me. That's one of his packages he put up for me. Right. Go ahead, Brother Cor. You know, I was also thinking about, too, is like making sure that you share your struggles with the other person that's struggling, too. Because sometimes people will look at you and because they haven't actually seen you do anything in front of people, they'll think that you just been good. You can't tell them nothing. Mm -hmm. But then when you actually share, hey, man, let me let me share with you where I messed up at this, this and that. Then it gives them some hope because they feel like. Uh, once sometimes people are fail and they feel like they can't they can't do right because they messed up that one time and so when they hear from you it helps give them some hope that they can keep on going because they're like hey man I failed but let me tell you man I had to get back up because I was scared this and this and that I didn't want to fall back and all that kind of stuff right brother man we're gonna read 33 through 36 go ahead sister Doris 
Oh, I was just going to say about, um, but like Brother Johnny was saying, when my dad died, it's still the mentality that my daddy gone, can't nobody on this earth tell me nothing no more. But God showed me, humble me real quick. And I, I, I appreciate God for that. Wow. Oh, that thought about being humble. That's a good point. That's very important. Come on, Brother Ben. Uh, this is John chapter 8, y'all, verse 33 through 36. And I want y'all to listen to the mentality of these people in verse 33 and see if we have people like this today. Go ahead. They answer him, we be Abraham's seed, and we're, ne we, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered him, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth, e abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you sh ye shall be free indeed. Y'all, when I look at verse 33, y'all, it amazes me that we still have people today that feel like they can be saved off of the faith of one of their loved ones. My grandmother was a praying woman. My daddy was a preacher. You know, they 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 root their salvation or they they validate their relationship with God based on someone they know that had a relationship with God. That is one of the most dangerous things you can do. They said, we are Abraham's seed. What's so special about this? We know, y'all, the great promise was given to Abraham. God said that he would bring nations from Abraham. Amen. We know that Abraham, or, or we, some of you may or may not know, but just so you know, Abraham is called the father of faith, meaning faith started with him. He was probably one of our first great examples of faith. Amen. And so I'll show y'all this. Some of y'all know it, but I know we have people on here that have never seen this before. Um, let me just go over here and show you this. This is Galatians 3, um, verse number 29. It says, if you belong to Christ, then you are who? Abraham's seed, meaning Abraham's child. If you belong to Jesus, you're a child of Abraham. And what? Heirs. What's an heir? An heir, y'all, is the person that gets the inheritance. What's the difference between inheriting something versus earning something? Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Inheritance mean that they is yours. It was it's for you to live behind and earning something mean that you worked hard to get there. So do y'all do y'all understand that we must inherit heaven? Amen. Amen. You can't work to make it to heaven. Heaven is yours because that's the house of your father. Mm. Am I making sense, y'all? Amen. 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 Where your yeah. treasures are, that's what? Where your heart is also. And so you can't have a home going if that ain't home. Mm. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. So when we come back over here, y'all, th these people have the mentality that because we can track our family back to Abraham, that makes us special. We A lot of people think because they can track themselves back to, they, they've been a member of a certain church for so long. I got baptized when I was such and such. If you're not in Christ though, they don't do you no good. And so they say, we be Abraham. See, we're never, we were never in bondage to any man. How can you say that? You shall make us free. And verse 34 says what? Truly, truly, that's what verily means. I say unto you, whoever commits sin is the what? Servant of sin. Now, y'all, what is sin? Transgression of the law transgression of God's law, right? So what if a person don't know God's law? No law for them. 
in a sense. You know the funny thing about God's law? Most people, church or no church, they have some of his laws wrote in their heart. Y'all feel? Like, watch this. Do y'all know anybody that don't go to church, but they jealous? Yep. Yeah. Where y'all yes, think sir. they come from? Did, God, did our God not tell us he a jealous God? Did our God not tell us that we were made in what? His image? Do y'all not understand that the emotion of happiness, joy, sadness, anger, all of these are emotions of God? Mm -hmm. The fact that you can be jealous. And so God said he a jealous God. Don't what? Put no other gods before him. Do we feel like that when it comes to our spouses? Do we feel like that? How do you feel if you tell your child to do something and somebody else come and tell them to do something and they obey that person? Oh, most definitely. <laughs> That's just... would, that, would that run you a little warm? But oh, yeah. And as children of God, as children of God, y'all, God tell us to do something and the devil come along and say, no, nah, we ain't doing that today. You say, you know what? I'm going with you, devil. Y'all think that may run him a little warm? Mm -hmm. So he goes on in verse 35. He said, and the servant abideth not. Listen to this, y'all. The servant does not live in the house forever. But the who does? The son does. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. What is he talking about, y'all? You know, sometimes you have company over to the house, don't you? Right? Yes. Don't your company have to eventually go home? Yes. Y'all, some of us in the house of God, we just company. Now, here's the question. Judge yourself. How do you know you're not just company? When you're doing things that you would do against yourself, pleasing God, and that's a different feeling. All right, come out of church and talk to me. When you act like how God acts. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's say, let me say like let's, let's not talk church. Let's talk now. Sister Felicia, how long do you think I would have to be at your house for me to stop feeling like a guest? Because you can, you going you might tell me, boy, you better go in there and get it yourself, but I'm not gonna be comfortable. How long do I have to come stay with you before I stop feeling like a visitor? One day. You think I can get over it in one day? I don't know about that, sis. <laughs> Yep. Sister Bria, how long you think you need? Uh, as far as me visiting somebody or somebody visiting me. It, it don't matter about what is normal for you to go stay in a strange place and you there long enough to where you feel like you're going home. Mm. Mm. Well, if I am consistently uh building a relationship i probably say like within the first 30 to 60 days uh but i'll say 30 because if i still feel uncomfortable you know like hey can, can i get some water and you know now nah, like you said go ahead go you know get you something to drink or whatever but that's that comes with building a relationship with that individual, though. You got it. So I'm going to say, go ahead, Brother Rod. Right. Sure. Go ahead, Brother Rod. You're muted. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, like, for me, Pastor, I, I know everybody different, but, like, if I don't, like, somebody would have to keep, like, telling me that this is my home and not only telling me that, but they would have to show me on a consistent basis. That's the only way I would be able to get comfortable because in my, I would always have it in the back of my mind that this is not my house. All right. Do y'all think maybe that's why we are the way we are when it comes to the house of God today? Yes. 
Because I'm going to tell y'all something. What God is saying right here is powerful. Listen to what he's saying. He says, the servant does not live in the house forever, but the son does. What he's letting us know, there's a time where the other dude's kids is in his house, but they're going to have to leave. This is why I started out with the scripture of if we would judge ourselves, what? We should not be judged. Are we able to judge ourselves right now, y'all, and really look over our lives and, and assess where we are with God? And when we look in the mirror, do we get a little uncomfortable feeling? Amen. Yes, uh, sir. Amen. If we're getting a little uncomfortable feeling, can you put your finger on why you're uncomfortable? And I'm going to tell you something. There is, a, there is a healthy uncomfortable. That is, you just don't have the cockiness to say you know. And you, you might like, Lord, it might be something. Yeah. But yeah. then some of us are saying, I know what it is. Pastor James, um, I was just thinking about the fact that you were saying that if you ain't feeling no type of way, then something is wrong. Like, you ain't feeling, you know how you ain't feeling nothing? I like the fact that I can feel that something's still wrong with me and that let me know God working on me somewhere in there. Y'all, y'all remember God said he judges the what? Thoughts and what? And the intents. In the in the oh. in he said in John 3, he said, this is what's going to condemn the world, that light has come into the world, but men love darkness because their deeds were evil. But what he said about these men where he said they won't come to the light. What am I saying to us tonight? I'm saying, y'all, when we look in the mirror, does something in our lives make us a little uncomfortable? Because all God is saying is all you got to do is confess it. He said if we confess it and repent, he said he's faithful. He'll forgive us. But if we can't fix our mouth to admit it, We condemning ourselves, y'all, because we refuse to come to the light. Amen. So watch this. He said, if it's Jesus that makes you free, you shall what? Be free. Be free indeed. Indeed. Let's go over to Galatians 4. Go ahead, brother, uh, sister, uh, sister Brea. Um, I wanted to say one thing that I, I have noticed from the young to the older generation is the lack of accountability within self. You know, there's no, or there's, um, I'm not going to say there's no integrity, but uh, that uh, you don't see a lot of people holding themselves accountable or like you say, you know, um, having fair judgment even within themselves you know mm -hmm. i could see here and, and get on my son about something and then i turn around and do the same thing and don't feel no type of way you get what i'm saying like that's not right that's not that's right, not right. Amen. amen and you know uh, i was talking to my wife earlier today and we was talking about the way children are being brought up today Y'all, you know, kids have always done stuff. You know, it ain't nothing new. Kids have always done things. But I I don't know if I've ever seen a time where parents condone so much of it. I mean, I'm not going to sit up and act like my generation didn't do stuff. But, man, I just remember parents that you had to hide that stuff from them. But now, oh man. I see kids doing stuff and then you find out it was the mama and the daddy recording. Mm -hmm. we, we living in, y'all, I don't know. And y'all know how easy this killing and stuff is. I don't know if we realize when you raise a child with that foolishness, that generation you leaving behind gonna be so 
Oh man, they, they don't have any natural barriers to stop them from doing things. You're they creating a monster. You created a monster and it's gonna come back to bite you. And it's just a scary thing. Okay, I hey, see you Pastor. Brother Rod and Sister Levine. Oh, I'll be I'm sorry. Um, Never mind. Brother Ben, read this 28 through 31, and then I, I got y'all. Yes, sir. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what says the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Okay. Go ahead, Brother Rod, then I'm coming to you, Sister Levine. Oh, I'm sorry, Pastor. I should have took that down. My hand just was still up. Okay, no problem. Go ahead, Sister Levine. I was just going to say to what you were saying earlier about there's no consequence for the, the kids. A lot of times it's because the parents are doing the same thing. So they actually condone what their kids, like you said, they're videoing and, and Facebooking and tweeting all that stuff because they actually condone it. Yeah, but the scary thing is I believe in parents. Parents has got God's name in their mouth. When you're learning the ways of God, do y'all not understand how God talk about generational curses? Like, we have more wisdom than worldly people. It's a scary thing when we can do it because that's why we, we get in this word like we do so that we understand what's working on the spiritual realm and, and why things are. We, we understand more about why things unfold the way they do in this world. We understand more about why children or young adults are the way they are right now. We understand why there's less and less love in the world because God told us all of these things were going to be because why? Sin would get worse and worse and worse. But it scares me for us to know what we know. And I'm not saying that your kids, listen, I'm not saying, I'm, this go for my own children. Our children will do things, but when parents okay with it, that's a scary thing. That is very scary. Go ahead, my man. Okay, I'm saying I just want to say uh, when I was coming up, we was not allowed to sit around grown people and listen to conversation, what they're talking about. And that's the way I brought my kids up, too. Mm. If I had company, they know I ain't had the number look at them. They know, okay, it's time to move around. Because mm -hmm. you're not going to look. You sit in my mouth because kids will pick up on things that we say and do. Yeah. As well. And now these days, people, kids, young kids will sit there and you can be talking to their parents and they'll take it over. Mm -hmm. I just it didn't happen with me before around people with kids and they'll look at me like, yeah, it's all then. I'd be like, What the world? <laughs> you know, it <laughs> took me out and I start talking to the parent because I'm not gonna talk to this kid. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna yeah. do it. Yeah, it's it just it's a to, it's just totally. I don't know. <laughs> well, well, let's let's look at the root of some of this. Let's look at the root of some of this. That's what we're looking at right here, dealing with the root of it. Watch this. It says, "Now Isaac was of the children of the promise." Now, for those of you that's new to this, what we gotta understand is that you know. The Bible says, you have people say that God loves everybody. Yeah, that's that, get thrown around a lot. You got to be careful how you throw that around. Right. Yes, he do, but he hates sin. God, there Amen. You go. Amen. And, God, and God says that he corrects who he loves. What do I mean? Some of us end up getting our hearts broken. Some of us end up having life things happen in life that we don't understand. 
God would do things like that for people that he's trying to save. But for people he don't care about, he'll let them prosper in their wrong. And so Isaac was one of Abraham's sons. And he said, the Bible said that Isaac was a child of promise. I'll show you why that was here in just a second. It said, but as then he that was born after the flesh. All that means is, y'all, Abraham had a son that was based on the flesh. He he got with a woman based on the physical aspect of it. Had nothing to do with choosing her based on what God said. What am I saying? Some of us are single. Some of us are dating. You're not dating based on is this from God. You're dating, dating based on this fulfills a lust of the flesh. Because when you, so basically God had promised Abraham that he was going to have a son, right? But he wanted to have a son with who? Sarah, is that right? Abraham and Sarah, okay. ain't nothing happening. So what does Sarah do? Sarah says what? Take my bond woman and Abraham, as much as I hate it, y'all go on in there and you go have a child with her. How many of y'all know that was totally physical? Good Amen. It wasn't acting on faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to say something, y'all. Let me say this. I'm going to say it. I'm going to pretty this up so it don't sound so bad. <laughs> many of the relationships that are started today were started the same way as, no, well, not exactly the same, but it was based on flesh. She was fine. Hey Amen, brother one. I'm, I'm sure you done seen one or two that was fine, right? And and, and that's all we need to, to ask for their number. And some people get a number and then he end up being a father, right? But he wasn't looking to see, man, can I make it the long haul with this woman? Does this woman have, he ain't, ain't no man set up and said, does she have wife qualities and, and you know, he ain't thinking about all that. It was physical. And the same with the ladies. We out, we young, we having a good time. And a child comes to pass. This is a child of the flesh. All right, I know I'm in a, I know, I'm sorry, y'all, but I'm going to tell y'all something. I know it's hurt because I'm talking to me too. I, I know this hurts, but what I'm telling you is, we do so much. We mess up so much. And then after it's messed up, then we call God. Amen. Had we brought God in on the forefront of it, it would have been easier to put it back together. It's like, it's like, it's like trying to, anybody ever tried to put something together and you don't use the instructions? Mm -hmm. and, and what happened? You'd be almost done and then you realize this ain't going to work. Is that, I'm missing some screws here and this, and you end up having to what? Take it all the way back apart and read the instructions. That's how we do a lot of times. And so it says, but as then he that was born after the flesh was persecuted him that was born after the spirit, he says, that's the way it is now. How many of y'all can relate to what it's talking about? How the one of the flesh persecutes the one of the spirit? Yeah, it's today. It's today, but how is it true today? Can I, uh, what can I say, Pastor? Go ahead. Um, it's gone. It just I, it brings me to that scripture when uh thy way, O oh Lord, is in the sanctuary. When I start to learn the ways of God, I'm still paying for what I did in the flesh. I get it now about when I talk to my wife about my two kids and how I had them, and I'm wondering why all these problems coming from. And then the woman before my wife. How I treated her is the reason why I don't treat my wife the way I, I don't put my wife through all that no more because I learned from that. But God showed me something. Boy, that wasn't my will no way. And I get it now after my past. I understand God. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't never in his will no way for me anyway. And I understand that now. The key thing when is when I learned the ways of God. 
the key thing you said though, brother Johnny, is Bria got a spiritual journey. Mm. The other lady got a carnal journey. Right. Amen. But what it but if the other lady would have got a spiritual journey, you might not would have met Bria. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. But what I what I am saying is this. How many of y'all know when you start becoming spiritual minded, your attraction change? Amen. Oh, yeah. You get disgusted. What you thought Amen. was, man, you're disgusted by it now. No, I want that. Well, you know, it's some truth in what you're saying, Brother Judge, but you ain't necessarily disgusted. What? That's just for me, though. I'm going to tell you what I mean. Y'all remember when Jesus asked the disciples, are you going to leave me too? Y'all remember that? Hey, Amen. The Bible talked about that multitude was following Jesus. He said, you got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. He said, all them people left him because they was like, ain't no way. And he turned to his disciples and said, y'all going to leave me too? And they said, where do we go, Lord? There's none other but you, right? When a man no, no, no. truly find the Lord, right? When a man or woman truly find the Lord, listen to me. You know, losing God, getting rid of God ain't an option. Hmm. So, whoever I'm going to be with, they don't have to be perfect, but they got to have room for God. I ain't talking about they got to be in church and holier than thou, but what I am saying is they have to have some type of sensitivity to God. Why? Because if they are enemy of God, then they're enemy of who? Me. They're enemy of us. Amen. Yeah. Is that you trying and to it's be not going to work. It's going to always be conflict because of the, you know, like you say, you have one person that's operating carnally and the other person that's operating spiritual mind. And they'll never see eye to eye because it's always going to be a war in the spirit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Sister Wanisi. I agree with that point of like when we were in the world, our attractions definitely were different. I know for me, <laughs> a funny example is um, believe it or not, uh, before I knew the Lord, I liked men with long hair, nail polish, eyeliner. I mean, feminine kind of looking like that was more so my taste so you know I was in for a shock <laughs> once I ended up realizing um yeah that's not what God is about all the androgynous stuff with the long hair and all that I know y'all remember how Theodore looked when he first came to the church <laughs> yeah, but Theo wasn't that kind of dude though he wasn't like that but he had long hair and he only yeah. kept it because I told him I wanted it Gotcha. Oh. Come on, Sister Levine. Now, don't you tell me Brother Tony had to have long hair. <laughs> no, no, that's your brother Tony. No, I had long hair, but that was a long time ago. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, you but... have been listening to Easy e and DJ Quick, so we know about your parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I think that the goal with what you're saying, it's like finding that missing link that you that you was looking for. Yeah. Yeah, and I I think that's that's what makes it such a such a, such a, a beautiful connection because when you truly uh find find the Lord like you're supposed to or find that spouse, there's things that there's, there's questions that start being answered that you didn't even know you would add a, add a, a question for or answer you didn't answer for. Yes, yes, and you know y'all to make a long story short about why the flesh persecutes the spirit is because when you start becoming spiritual minded, you start thinking more like the Lord. It always argues with how the devil feels. And what's scary is, y'all, um, think about how long we ran with the devil and didn't know we was with him. We, we literally, we was running with the devil with a clear conscience. Amen. Right? It's true. That is so true, brother. So true. Man. I think about how many little sins I used to do and would go walk away with a clear conscience because, man, ain't done, God, I don't care nothing about that. Like, didn't even have a conscience towards God. So I'm going to move on. But watch this. Verse 30. 
Nevertheless, what does the scripture say it says? It says what? Cast after who? Bond woman and her what? Her son. For the son of the bond woman shall not be a what? Yeah. And with the son of the free woman. Let me slow down so we can comprehend this. Y'all, the bond woman and the free woman kind of apply to all of us, if you will, in a way. If you have not been born again, then that would make you a child of who? Which woman? The bond woman. The bond woman. The bond woman. What do I mean born again? This born again starts out with you have a renewed mind. You start thinking differently. You start having a conscience towards God. How many of us can say, man, at least now I'm more sensitive to what God thinks? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That means that your mind is being renewed. You, you're, you're starting to think differently now. That's the spirit. Praise God that you're starting to think different. This is how you know that you have a new mother. All right? But he says, if you are a child of the born woman, you are still obeying the flesh. Now, watch this. The free woman could be your mother, but you sin. How do you know the free woman is your mother when you sin? Guilty conscience. There you go, brother. Or are you going to fix it? You have disappointed your mother. Anybody used to be afraid of to call your mama? When you, I'm, I'm using this analogy because, like I said, we have people that are different places in their understanding of the Bible. So I want everybody to be able to follow along and to, for us to be able to take something with it, with them. What I want y'all to know is. When, when it comes to Jesus, it's about relationship, y'all. Amen. Should you learn what the scriptures say? Absolutely. But how do you get to the point that it's more relationship than how many scriptures you know? Amen. Definitely relationship. Yes. And so I know all of us had a mother. And if you care whether or not you disappointed your mother or not, I'm not saying that the bond woman, the free woman is literally your mother, but I'm just using this as an analogy for you to be able to relate. When you have been born of the spirit, you have a conscience towards how the spirit feels. But if you are of the bond woman, you have a conscience towards her. It makes sense. And so what God is saying is the free woman, her children are heirs. That's why I was stressing what's the difference between an heir versus working with something. The bond woman's kids will try to work for God. But the free woman's children work for God because they are of God. Was that too churchified or did that make sense? It made sense. Mm -hmm. It made sense. One is just a job. The other one is more than a job. It's just the ways of the family. Yeah. Anybody on here? There's a goal behind reunions? it. Y'all have family reunions? So you know the culture of your family reunion, right? Mm -hmm. And that's just what the family do, right? Right. All right. And you don't have to rehearse for the family reunion, do you? Because why? Yeah. You one of them. Yeah. You already know. You already know. So, so what I'm saying is, y'all, when you are a child of God, this is just what we do. We don't, this is not work. This is what we do. Yeah. Amen. Hey, Pastor. Yes, sir. What you're making me think about with that is like you come into it because you come into the um to the job site because it has benefits, but it's not it's not something where your heart really is. You're just there because it's got some benefits. 
you're not trying to progress in the in the company or anything like that trying to just be more than just down on the floor and so when that whenever them benefits start cutting off that's when people start disappearing because their heart wasn't never really into it yes amen that's amen. good so looking at verse 31 it says so then brethren we are not children of the bond woman but we are of the who the free so let's go we're gonna go back y'all and look at the story of this bond woman and free woman real quick this is Genesis chapter 21. We're just going to start at verse number nine, Brother B. Sir. I'm down to uh, 13. Okay. All right. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore, she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the, of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. And all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation because he is thy seed. Y'all, this is we could look at this on so many levels. Um, but let's just look at this. He says, verse nine, he said, and Sarah saw the son of Hagar. Hagar is the bun woman. Y'all, what Hagar represents to us is Hagar represents how we was born, the life we lived before God came into our life. That's that's what she represents. Our fleshly, our clubbing days, our doing what we want to do days. That's what she represents. So he says, Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, Michael, making fun of him. He said, wherefore she said unto Abraham, cast out Hagar, cast out this bond woman and what? And her son, for the son of the bond woman shall what? Not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And it says, watch this. And the thing was very grievous to Abraham's sight because of his son. Y'all listen to me. If you have children, I want you to know that if our children don't accept Christ, their mother still was Hagar. I got you. I'm slowing down because I want to make let everybody think about what I said. Let's go to the end of our lives. You know, y'all, some people have had to bury their children. Y'all know how hard that could that is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a scary thing to have to bury your child. What a yeah. scary thing to have to bury your parents. But we have to bury our loved ones sometime, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all, do we not understand that? What I'm, what I'm trying to stress, and I'm going slow here, is when people don't accept Christ in their lives, they basically died spiritually, the child of the bond woman or the carnal woman. They, Sarah didn't become their mother. Why am I stressing this? All of the people that come through Sarah, children of faith, people that have accepted Christ, these children are heirs. These children, these people will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Y'all, we get to funerals and we give everybody the inheritance. Say, could you repeat that one more time, yeah. Pastor James? I said, when we get to funerals and preachers give <laughs> everybody that dies access to the inheritance, which is heaven. Amen. I got I heard you right. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, they shall sure put him in heaven, say, because God missing another angel. He just wanted his angel back. Now, uh, make a plan, pal. Y'all know in Matthew where the Bible talk about wide is the gate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah no, sir. People yeah. hear about it. It goes where? To destruction. To destruction. And what it but is narrow. And many 
there'll be the no hearing. Y'all okay. listen to me. God is telling us up front, the majority of people are going through the wrong gate. Mm -hmm. Way of saying that plainly, which you rarely hear people say, the majority of people are going to eternal damnation. Amen. According to the word of God. That's a hard pill to swallow. Oh, yeah, it's scary when you think about what gate you're going through. Now, now that's why I started out with judge yourself. Judge whether or not you're striving to live with God or not. Because if you can't look in the mirror at yourself and say, I know I'm trying to please God. I know that I'm doing the best that I can. You're not even a loyal judge to yourself. What better do you have judging others? Amen. But, but now, the Bible says the majority of people going through the wild gate, right? If, if that's true, then how is it that the majority of funerals people go through the narrow gate? Mm. How many of you have been to a funeral and, and 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 they told them this one going through the wide gate? Never. 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 And you know why we don't do it? Worried about people's feelings. It'll start a shoot. It'll start and it'll start a shooting too. Mm. <laughs> yeah, people start busting. If you That's say a war. Right. <laughs> people are very sensitive at the time. But now, now that everybody's come, I want you to look into what the word of God is saying. When God told, when, when, when Sarah told Abraham he had to go, listen how Abraham felt. And the thing was what? Mm. Very, very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. He had to put his child out. She was telling him, this boy cannot have any inheritance from you. So even though God loved us all, there are some of us that can't have the inheritance. Why? Wrong mother. Mm. Persecuting the church. Mm. Or just have the, or just start with what about just walking by faith? Actually applying it. Actually just believing. Just walking in what you know, not what you don't know, but what neither you one, know. <laughs> neither one of them don't work without the other. You can confess yeah. all day and be far from God. Don't work that way. Yo, God is, good. God is so good. Listen to your brother. God is so good. Amen. He said he judges the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. You don't even have to know the whole Bible. You don't even have to know a lot of Bible. He's looking at what you know, your heart towards him, and how you respond to what you know about him. Because that's your integrity. Amen. Do y'all realize that there's people in the streets living by more integrity than people that's in the scriptures? That's... Man. But I appreciate he's so good that, like, you can mess up, Brother Warner, and he was like, yeah, he messed up again. I'm like, dang, because now he just ain't strong enough. But if I just keep picking him up, he going to overcome. I'm through fooling with James because he's trying to find a way to justify what he do wrong. But God said he give mercy to what? To whom he will. Y'all know God don't give everybody the same mercy. Yeah. Some people, he let them get away with it 30 times. Some people, they get away with it twice. It's people on here that I know you probably should have been dead. Somehow Amen. you got hooked. Amen. Setting up traps for you, all kinds of stuff. But somehow you walked away. And there's other people that set up that same trap and they killed them. Why? Because God saw some good thing in you. Amen. So watch this. Verse 12 says, and God said unto Abraham, this is God talking to Abraham. He said, don't let it be grievous in your sight because of this kid. He says, because of the bond woman. He said, in all that Sarah has said unto you, he said, listen to what she's telling you. For in Isaac shall your children be come. 
all your children that come through Isaac are the ones that I'm going to call. <laughs> y'all, I we don't we don't have a lot of time, but I won't stress y'all out with this out. But just for, for until we can get to Thursday, I want y'all to know what God is basically revealing through Isaac. Isaac represents the lineage of promise, the lineage of people that come by faith in God. The other line, Hagar, y'all, that was what we call a hookup. That was when a man went in into a woman and they made a baby. And yes, that boy was Hag was, was Abraham's son too. But Isaac got here because Isaac was the child God promised Abraham. So Abraham had a child where he went off and did his own thing. And he had a child where he went off and he and, and, and he listened to God and that child came through the promise of God. He said, I'm calling the children that came through my promise. As we get into the New Testament, I'll go ahead and tell y'all what we I'm, I, I hope to reveal to you. There's several ways you can look at this. If you have not been born again, you're still a child of the flesh. You're still Hagar's child. The Bible says everybody that is born, they're born into what? Iniquity. This is why we all must be what? Born again. What does that literally mean to be born again? This is when you get a new mind, a new way of living. Going in the water. Well, you actually go in the water before you go in the water. It's kind of like a funeral. Yeah. You, die, you die two weeks before your funeral. Right. So I'm saying when you go in the water, you leave that. You're supposed to leave that old. You in there. Amen. And come out with a new one. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. You actually, actually want to go in dead. Mm -hmm. don't, nobody, don't nobody walk to the funeral home, get in their casket, then die. Amen. And, and a lot of times, y'all, unfortunately, that's how we treat baptism. We think we're going to go down there to that pool and we're going to go under that water. No. We're going to die underwater and come back up new. No, 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 no. You're supposed to go. You're supposed to be dead when you get to your baptism. You're supposed to be done kill that flesh. The Bible said that baptism mm -hmm. is what? <laughs> Showing a clear conscience towards God. You're supposed to be done already put away that old person. Yet. That water ain't going to do nothing but rinse you off. Yeah, because you're supposed to be to tell him, you know, you're supposed to repent before you go in the water. Amen. True. And make a covenant started. with God. And that's right, sis. That, that is absolutely right. And so what I'm hoping we get from this is, y'all, as we look at this, is I can't wait till we look at Esau and them, how he talks about. Now, both of these boys came from the same woman, but only one of them did God call his people through. What I'm stressing to you is, y'all, if you're a parent on here and you have children, know that God will show your children mercy based on your living. But let's be in prayer for all of our children, that all of our children will one day accept Christ in their life. Why? Because if the Bible is true, he says, if you be Christ, you Abraham seed. So what does that mean? If you're not Christ, then whose child are you? David. And so let's, as parents, do our job as best we can to give our children God while we can. Because they're going to hit the an age, they listen, they're going to do their own thing. And we got to put it in them while they, we can. Because I know I love my kids. I know y'all love y'all. And I'm just saying to my fellow believers, brothers and sisters, God ain't playing with us. We playing with him. <laughs> All through the word, he say, teach them why you came. That when they become old, what? They shall not depart. So let's do what we can while we can, y'all, because, you know, I don't know about you, but I want to see mine in heaven. I'm sure you do too. Amen. Amen.
But it's yeah. not it starts with us. All right. Do we have any quick? Go ahead, brother John. I see you got your hand up. We got we're gonna pray. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say what keeps me walking with God is I know a lot of y'all done been walking longer than I have. But I think about this. I try to make sure I strive to be with the 99 because I haven't had one of those moments where, you know, people fall away from God. Mm -hmm. I haven't had one of those moments. But what I do keep in my mind, I'm just going to use Brother Corey because he tells me, he tells a lot of great stories. Um, I might, if I decide to walk away, I might just die because God might then give me the same mercy he gave Brother Corey. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what keeps me striving to be with the 99 right there. I'm the, when they look at the prodigal son, I look at myself as the child that stayed with God, not leaving. Like I say, under God, that's why you hear me say, that's why y'all hear me say so passionately, my Lord, my God, my love for God, because I ain't trying to go away from God. I only want experience from just listening to other stories. Well, you know what's scary about what you said, Brother John, about you might just die? Man, like now when I understand how God works, it's mercy in that. I'm going to tell you why. Because some people walk away and he let them stay alive. So if they can watch their punishment. And no, for real. And that's I mean that's scary, man. Like when he take you take your spirit from you, but he don't put you to sleep. Things so. all. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. That's what I was thinking about. Yes. Well, and he was still I, working. Yeah, he was still working for God. Don't know. He's been fired. So, all right, y'all. Let's have a word of prayer. I enjoyed y'all tonight. Um, it gets better, I promise. We're going to get back over into the New Testament real quick. We just kind of need some foundational pieces first. But come on, let's have a word of prayer, y'all, and we'll get right, and we'll, um, we'll, we'll have a good night. And then I wanted to tell y'all this. Remind me on Thursday while it's on my mind. I told y'all something wrong in Revelation 6 about who those people were. Um, that said, how long, Lord, shall it be before you revenge us? I want to show y'all who they are. So one of y'all remind me to tell you, okay? Okay. All right. All right, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to just study another portion of your word, Father. We just pray for your spirit, Lord, that it be up on us, Father. And we pray, Lord, that you keep us as we go to our different destinations, Lord. Watch over us as we sleep tonight, Father, and let your spirit be mighty up on us, Lord, that we may be a blessing unto your name. If this is your will, Lord, let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.